Okay, folks, now we're, we're on to this mare. You all know the story. In case you just got on the bus, it's a 12-year-old mare, rode incorrectly, turned out for five years, and uh, she's not a colt. She's an older horse. So what I want you to watch is while I'm doing this exercise today, she's going to get mouthy and curl her lip and get all bothered. What that is is a habit. It's going to go away. I know it is. If I were to just focus on that mouth, I'd be dead in the water. I would never get anything done. So, in time, as in I rode a horse in Wyoming that was a pure D cutting horse, and the boss got it and cut it to me, and I cowboyed on it for a year. And every time I got near corrals, it was okay to gather on, but when I got near a corral, that horse would start doing that and shaking. One day, about a year later, I took cattle into the corral and the horse just walked in. From that day forward, that horse was fine. That's why I'm telling you this mouth thing is going to disappear. If you're a fair leader, they'll, they'll figure out they don't need it anymore. And they get rid of that. So, that's not a disclaimer. It's not a crutch. It's not an excuse. It's a fact. The reason I can tell you is because I did it several times. So... First thing we got to do is backing up because that's the go-to, if you'll remember. She knows how to back up. She knows how to stop. She knows how to back up. Okay. Horses aren't dumb. She's already seen the poles. and In her brain, I'm going to side past the poles. That's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to do a little prelim on this disengaging the hindquarter. And while the feet are moving, I'm going to move my leg back and move her hip over. It's all blocks. It's all building blocks. So I'm going to put my right leg on, reach back and move the hip over, which I just did. Now, if you'll notice on a horse that's troubled, as soon as you move your leg in a different position, their head goes up or they start to, to do that or something because of, they were overdone, overcooked, too much, too fast. So now I'm going to put the left leg on and move the hip off over to my right. I'll block with my right leg until the hip makes it. See my right leg blocking? There. Now, you don't hear the cricket because the horse just braced up and put its tongue against the mouthpiece because, oh my God, I got to do something different. Well, now you can hear the cricket. That's how this works. I said, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It's not like I'm asking you to jump through fire. So, once again, backing, left leg back, right leg on, hip moved over, left leg supporting, left leg supporting the left front so it doesn't turn left with the front end. Right leg back so I can move the hip over. Good. So now I'm going to do this exercise of a serpentine walking backwards. And when I can walk her backwards and hear the cricket, then I know she's ready to move on. So I'll just work her backwards. Hip. Hip. I'm incorporating my skull and my shoulder. I open my right shoulder to move the hip over to the left. Left shoulder. Now bear in mind, my seat bones are flat in the saddle. They're just twisting. Horses can read that through the saddle, period. The reason I walk forward instead of just keep backing around the curls is because I want to give her a chance to think. Now it turns into something where she's like, okay, I got it. Right leg on, left leg back. Left leg on, right leg back. Now for those of you that want to teach a horse to turn around nice, this is one of the prelims. They have to turn on the hindquarter. Backing, hip over, good, she's on it. Right leg back, hip over, good. Now once again, here's the number one mistake everybody makes. This is not how you teach a horse to do it. This is not how you do it. Keep your hands as close as you can, as straight as you can. If you need to help, pull straight back. If I pull my right rein, I'm going to move the hip over to the left. What you got to understand is that I'm going to end up roping off this mare, and I don't have time to do this all two-handed. So I want her to learn to make it off of my leg. 
This is riding off your body. Right leg, right leg, right leg, boom, she made it. I told you earlier about testing yourself. I did it one-handed. <sighs> Exhale when you stop, backing up. Right leg on, left leg back. Horse moving over, moving the hip over. See the hand? Transition. When you ride western, you don't ride two-handed your whole life. Especially if you want to get a job on a ranch, unless you can rope with your teeth. Western riding is done one-handed, period, when you're finished. Okay, this horse has the concept. All right, now I'm going to put it on the poles, and its brain is going to automatically go to side passing, and the hip thing went out the window. So, I'll just remind it. Now watch the body of the horse. Watch it anticipate me. Here it comes. Good. Now, watch the ears. The ears are going to alternate. There they go. What that means is that that right eye looked at a horse over there in the corral. So it means the mind changed. It wasn't all just focused on me pulling on it, moving it, kicking it, whatever. All of a sudden its mind went somewhere else. So that tells me, okay, good, I broke it. Now the right front foot has to step through. Pull helps. Now, I've got a pole to help me. I've got a space to bring the rear end through. I'm going to lean over the dash, over exaggerated. Reach back, make contact. I don't want the horse to back up. My right leg is back. Both legs were on. Right leg is back. Right leg is back. Right leg is back. The left hind is stuck. Good. Left hind just made it. A horse, you know, a horse can get stuck on one foot. This is breaking it down. This is called a release. This bit in my brain is focused on release. Pressure's a given. Release is what I'm after. Excuse me. Right front foot again, if you would. There, that way you won't hit the... Hole. Okay, now I put her in the deep end. Now I'm just going to show her without the poles. I haven't leaned forward on this horse since the day I got her. Unless it's doubled over in laughter watching somebody ride. Okay, there's contact. She's picking all the directions. What, what do I do? My legs are static. I'm going to say, I'll let you know what to do. Now, when I get prepared here and this horse is standing correct, oh, and collection's wonderful, but it's not going to always be there. That comes over time. Left leg back, lean over the dash, ask the rear end to move. Right leg blocks the right front. Left leg back. There goes the mouth. Left leg back. Left leg back. Left leg back, left leg back, right hind is stuck, right hind is stuck, there, you're fine, both legs, now this is the learning curve, bingo, now for those of you that remember, one of the problems I had when I first started riding was her feet would get stuck, literally, all four feet, bam. So I'm borderline giddy at how well this is going. You'll also notice that I did a really creative thing with the back cinch, it's gone. I did that for your sake and I let put the billets up behind the kennel. I watch people in the clinics ride western saddles with the back cinch hanging down eight inches. And then when they're in this exercise, they're simply spurring the back cinch billet or the back cinch itself. 
So if you ride western and you have a back cinch and you need to school your horse and you don't know how to turn your foot out, then take the back cinch off, lay the billets across here and you're on your way. Okay. Now, rear end needs to go that way. Contact. Leaning. Now I'm over exaggerating. Later on, it'll be like the bridle horse. You don't even know what I'm doing. Don't get anal. You're not going to get collection and rear end at the same time yet. Right leg back. Left leg is on, right where it's hanging. Right leg back, here it comes. Hind quarter made it, took my leg off. Right leg back. Hind quarter made it. Hind quarter made it. Hind quarter made it. Now, see how all this happens? Don't worry about it. Perfection's highly overrated. When her brain finally figures out that all she's got to do is move her hindquarters she won't need to do all that don't get caught up in her watch machine now left leg back roll she knows what I want she knows exactly what I want it's nothing personal if she doesn't do it my right leg is hanging straight down to block the right front foot lean reach here it comes think here, see how my leg came off as soon as it moved? Here it comes. Right leg, left leg. Bingo. Okay, this lesson is over. Please understand that cowboys work by the month, so it's not like they need to get something done in an hour. That's kind of the month. Remember, going back to it, just because I babble all the time, I've got a ranching background. I think like a cowboy working cattle. That's how I think. Oh, by the way, if you get that done, you can go trail ride and go get the mail and have a wonderful day. Okay, she has the concept. Now I'm going to put her on the poles. And this is where you got to be true to yourself. It's either all going to fall apart because she can't mentally handle it, or she's going to say, okay, I get it. Or it's going to be halfway. We'll see. Side passing. It's like backing now. It's a done deal. She's got it. Straighten her out a little bit. Good. Side pass. And reaching back with the right. Now the, the right front foot, one of the reasons it stays is because there's a pole laying there. They don't like hitting their hooves on the poles. Remember that. You're not going to take these two poles with you to a Brandon. You're just going to school with it. Over at the front end, forward, side pass. I'm going to lean forward first as a pre-signal. And lean, left leg back, right leg stopping, hind quarter over, bingo. Okay. Now, somebody asked about how do you distinguish what's going to happen with a horse before you get on it? And what he was talking about was I had mentioned about cutting your string of horses on a ranch. Oh, by the way, you understand this is the biggest number one thing of how to train a horse, what I'm doing right now. It's called the release. Okay. So to answer your question, having gone through many fractures and sutures, I wasn't real good at it as a young man. I think we can all relate to the silver bullet invincible thing. All right. So now when you catch your horse and its head is really high or is there's what we call a J in the tail. Deb, if you'd come up here close, we need to show a J. Now you're not going to be able to see this from a horse's back. But if all your buddies around you are waiting to get going and they're staring at the horse's tail, it's because there's a big J in it. Let me show you what it looks like. 
So now they're either getting ready to laugh or feel bad or run into the shoulder of your horse. I don't care. A J in a horse's tail looks like this. That's not a good sign. When the tail is here, that's not a good sign. She grabbed her tail. That means she's really bothered. So, J grabbed. Not good. Now, for those of you with the animals with really long ears, here's one of the clues. I don't like what we're doing. Now, since there's no back cinch on here, I can show you when you saddle, if this part of the saddle is up about here, it's what we call a doghouse. You could fit a doghouse under it. That's not a good thing. I don't know how else to explain all this to you except show you with a horse, but I'm not gonna. So when the hide is so tight that you couldn't drive a nail in it, it's kind of a clue that your horse is bothered. If the head is up, and frozen solid. That's not a good sign. When you get on and they walk like they're walking on eggs, that's not a good sign. If their head disappears, you're going to die. Yeah, so to go back to square one, when I have a horse, which incidentally reminds me, before I would get on a horse, any horse, this is how you do, you untrack them. Now if they don't cross their hind legs, depending on your age and the temperature, you either don't get on and you keep walking, or you climb on and nod your head. It's that simple. Okay, now going a step further, when you're untracking a horse, you watch that hind leg. And what I do through the training world is I watch when I first start riding these horses, they'll go across over about here. And as it moves on, they'll start reaching deeper. The deeper they reach, the more they're telling you they're letting down. And this is another reason why you can get set up to turn a horse around and get leads and everything else because the hind quarter is starting to relax. So... That horse is ready to get on. The way our clinics work is that on Friday, I watch every rider and every horse. I put them through about a dozen tasks. So, being Captain Obvious, if it's all going to fall apart, I get to see it on Friday without me throwing my leg over. That's part of the point. I tell people in my clinic, if I choose not to ride your horse, don't take it personal. I've only not getting, gotten on two horses. One, a guy led up to me, he had a sling on. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> and another one I can't remember. Oh, I know, it was so full of ulcers, it couldn't hardly stand still. It was just, it was terrible shape. So she got that taken care of and the horse turned out wonderful. Anyway, I watch them all day Friday and then I ride every horse on Saturday. So now I have the opportunity to show the human what they can do, their horse. And on Sunday, I hand them back the horse. So there should be some improvement. That's the big picture. But one of the reasons I don't ride them on Friday is because of what we just talked about. I need to watch these horses. The famous line for people that do what I do is somebody will say, you know what, I'd like you to ride him because I can't afford to get hurt. That's what they tell me. Okay. So I say, here, hold my sign. Let me get hurt. No. Anyway, there's some politics involved. Okay, that's it on the hindquarter. You build on it and you end up with the horse like the bridle horse over time. There again, what's time? Who cares what time is? This horse, in two months, she's not all that bothered anymore. She's still got some bad habits, some ticks, we call them, but she's getting, she's getting pretty darn nice. That's it, thank you.